Hello everyone, today we'll cover the looseness in turbo machines. We have explored various topics across the separate videos labeled as Part A, B, C, and D. And today we'll continue with Part E, looseness. There are two primary types of looseness, structural looseness and bearing looseness. Let's look into the structural looseness first. Structural looseness manifests when the machine lacks proper support in its base. Poor mounting, poor base, poor base support, the distorted base can contribute to structural looseness. Of course, the primary cause of major issues often stems from loose bolts. The structural looseness can result in elevated vibration at frequencies such as 1x, 2x, 3x, and beyond. Indeed, it is crucial to examine the structural looseness when there is a noticeable upward trend in the frequency spectrum over time. So, conducting a thorough inspection of the base bolts is essential. The structural looseness can manifest in various ways, including examples such as broken anchor bolts. Also, the absence of grout under the frame can lead to structural looseness. And the thinness of the washer may pose a risk of deformation or yield, potentially resulting in structural looseness. Also, bolt and frame fretting, along with the corrosion-induced issues, can contribute to structural looseness. Let's return to this figure. Now, let's delve into bearing looseness or rotating looseness. Bearing looseness or rotational looseness can generate high order frequencies including 1x, 2x, 3x, and beyond. This multi-frequency stems from a rattling motion. Excessive clearance can lead to contact between mating surfaces, resulting in a chopped or truncated waveform that serves as an indication of such contact. For example, the truncated signals in time domain indicates the contact. By using FFT, the truncated signals in the time domain is translated as the harmonic frequencies in the frequency domain. The truncated waveform is represented by harmonics such as 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, and so on. So, returning to this slide, if your machine vibration measurements displays multiple harmonics, 1x, 2x, 3x, and so on, in the frequency spectrum, it indicates the presence of the rattling motion within the machine. Additional information related to how to define the bearing fit can be found in Part 12 video. Certainly, it is crucial to monitor the overall noise level. Typically, vibration measurements can be segmented into multiple layers, each corresponding to severity of vibration, offering guidance for inspection, repair, and maintenance activities of the machine. So, the crucial question is, where should I attach the sensors? Here is an example of a machine layout. And the optimal location for attaching the sensors are highlighted below. These are the prime spots for effectively detecting the bearing conditions. These spots are chosen because they facilitate the transfer of bearing vibrations, which leads to better detection of bearing conditions as illustrated here. In case of complex machine arrangement, conducting modal analysis can be beneficial for assessing the natural frequencies of the machine setup. The modal analysis provides insights into whether the foundation is weak or stiff based on the understanding of natural frequencies. Various approaches can be employed to stabilize the foundation and mitigate the vibration from the external sources as shown in the photo. Alright, we discussed the topic related to looseness today. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to explore, feel free to leave comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.